The last example I'll show you here is a interesting one involving a bicycle trying to bicycle wheel being rolled up over a curb. So here we have the bicycle wheel mass m radius r and this curb is less than radius r or this problem would have no solution because what we're trying to find is the minimum force f needed how how small can f be so that this bicycle this whole bicycle wheel whoop, pops up over this curb all right and it's only going to be a horizontal force you may have the intuition that if you pull if you put the force at an angle this job would be easier but that's not what we're going to do so our free body height h is the curb radius r and the application force f mgx from the center of the wheel straight down so you might be able to already observe to get this to move over the curb we gotta we've got to have a force from this point here across this radius arm a clockwise torque so to speak but this force here about this point is going to try and rotate it counterclockwise so it has to be overcome so that's kind of a broad overview so this is the point the pivot point that we're really interested in so we have some geometry that we have to deal with to get what the specific torques are now there is a f prime i'm calling it that would be applied here and each of these that have its well that force is made up of the components f y prime which is just big mg because there is no other vertical force going on here the applied force is strictly horizontal and so that the horizontal part is that force of this pivot point force acting well we don't have to find the pivot point force but let's find the applied force needed to do this so this radius arm about this pivot point through which this force acts is r minus h r minus h the condition is going to be that we're going to reduce the normal force to zero so as soon as this applied force is enough to make this normal force go away we've met the condition now it's going to start to rotate and then this moment arm is going to immediately get bigger as this rotates this moment arm is going to increase and we can reduce this force to keep it rotating hope that makes sense now we're going to pivot about this point some of the torques is zero so we have mg the counterclockwise direction mg times this distance here and that's just well that is using pythagorean theorem we got the hypotenuse which is r so r squared minus this squared which is r minus h squared so the square root of the sum of the squares i'm sorry the square root of the difference of the squares equals the applied force through r minus h so that's our equation let's solve it for the force and get our answer expand that radical and this has r squared nicely going away and so there's a result and it is a pretty interesting result well it was a pretty interesting result that is if you enjoy the details of the physics of the force required to get a wheel to roll over a curb well let's put the force on top of the wheel now so this will be extremely similar except the force is way above way up here and that's just simply going to change its value for reasons why you should be able to almost immediately see so we have the counterclockwise torque as a result of the gravitational tug on the wheel that's going to be the same but the application force is way up there so we still have the same pivot point and our force to the left is equal to the force to the right but this moment arm through which the force acts now is just much bigger we've included in a whole extra r instead of r minus h it's 2r minus h so that'll give us a lot more torque with a lot less force 
So same as before, mg times the moment arm, which is square root of r squared minus quantity r minus h squared, equals the applied force now times 2r minus h. And there is our coveted result. And the only difference is, is in the denominator, we have 2r minus h, which obviously makes the force required a lot less.